These features are missing from the new Minecraft 1.18 update. Behold! The new and improved scoped crossbow like you've never seen it before. We've already done a video about the scoped crossbow, but unfortunately we didn't actually have a way to make it work since, you know, the clicking functionality of a crossbow and a spyglass kind of interrupt each other. But oh ho ho, I think we've figured it out. In fact, this might be the best implementation I've seen yet. All right, look at all those targets down there. So the way this works is the normal crossbow, of course, requires the right click functionality to charge it up and, of course, shoot. And of course, the spyglass is the same way. But if we left click, we can then actually make the two work together. So in this case, you could see I can now actually charge up and shoot while also using the spyglass, combining the functionality. Now, I'll admit the arrows, you know, might not line up perfectly with the crosshairs, but it is still very, very cool because they actually work very nicely together. So close. Ah, so close. No. <laughs> yeah, we did it. Oh, I have an idea. Hold up. Before we continue, this is a compilation of my favorite 1.18 related videos that I uploaded in 2021. So sit back and enjoy. I have an idea. I have an idea. No scope. Well, here we are, my friends, <laughs> in the deep dark, where we are going to spawn in our very own pet, totally not dangerous, totally not scary, friendly warden. I can honestly just go ahead and tell you now, this is going to be frightening, because this is probably one of the closest takes of the warden I have seen yet. My team and I have done a fantastic job, and without further ado, let's just... Oh goodness set him down it's a little dark in here so it's a little hard to see at the moment but as you can see he is just wobbling around and as we walk around as you can see i can sneak and he really doesn't know i'm here we got a little glimpse of his heartbeat there too look at that it actually glows you could hear the heartbeat and everything and if we just walk a little bit he's a little unsure oh okay yeah he definitely knows i'm here by now <laughs> oh no and as you can see, it actually starts to get faster, and it will chase you. Oh, jeez. Okay. I don't I don't like this very much. Please? No. 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 Well, all right. Uh, let's let's maybe try that again, shall we? This, this guy is absolutely frightening. There is really no way that you are easily going to be able to get around him. Now, it's only when you make movements, which in the actual 1.17 update would be classified as a vibration. So just as an example, if we go ahead and break a block... He will instantly know I'm here. Uh. Oh. Oh. Hang on. Oh, no, he sees me. He sees me. All right. For this idea, imagine that you can take all of the golden armor and golden tools and combine them with copper ingots in the early game to produce something better than iron, but not quite as good as diamond. And for this example, we're going to need a smithing table, which, as you can see, I managed to have one right here. Totally didn't place this. As you can see, we can basically combine gold with copper ingots to create none other than rose gold armor. Now, this is actually scientifically correct. If you combine copper and gold, you get rose gold. Now, in this case, it takes on the properties of essentially iron and gold, meaning you get the durability of iron, but the strength of copper, meaning you can get faster pickaxes before actually getting to diamond. Now, of course, this still means that there's still a reason to go get diamond. I mean, it's definitely going to be more durable in the long run, but the idea of mining up large areas with the rose gold pickaxe, I mean, honestly, it's amazing. Just watch this. But first, let's suit up in style. Looking fantastic. Just for comparison, I've got an iron pickaxe and a rose gold pickaxe. Now, if we use the iron, you can see it's generally a good speed. I mean, anyone who plays survival Minecraft is definitely familiar with the speed of an iron pickaxe. By the way, yes, green lantern, a little bit more on that momentarily. But as you can see, if we switch over to the rose gold pickaxe, it's actually a lot faster. And it's definitely something that would come in handy in the late early game of Minecraft if that made any sense at all. And of course, if you enchant it, it even goes further beyond. This actually gives good strategy because it's essentially faster than diamond while not being nearly as durable. So depending on what you're wanting to do, whether it be have a pickaxe that lasts a long time throughout all of your survival adventures, or just simply mine out a large area, there's gonna be different pickaxes that are better. 
better depending on what you're doing. And perhaps one of my favorite reasons this idea is amazing is the fact that it adds more to the smithing table in the early game of Minecraft, teaching you all about it before you ever get your hands on netherite. Not to mention, the armor is looking pretty snazzy if I do say so myself. And before we move on, depending on how you look at it, this would be the progressional chain of rose gold armor. It would basically be right after gold and chest plates, requiring gold to even craft it. So it actually gives you a reason to go through all of the different sets of armor until, of course, you can get diamond and then, of course, after that, netherite. This next idea is actually really cool, and you could kind of consider it a bit of a chemistry lesson, even though I'm definitely no chemistry teacher. So, if you combine copper and fire, you get green fire. But it actually gets really cool. Let me explain why this works. Okay, for the sake of adding some danger to the video, let's put the crafting table there. <laughs> so for this particular idea, I've added copper nuggets. And whenever you combine that with gunpowder, you actually get copper sulfate, which is a chemical that actually does produce green fire. So yes, of course, green fire is cool, but it actually continues to go further and they actually have functionality. So to give you an example, we can actually create various different copper sulfate items. So for example, I've got copper sulfate torches, which of course, as you guessed, makes copper sulfate lanterns, which I did show earlier, and I gotta figure out how to do it, but I'm pretty sure we could also create a copper sulfate campfire, which is definitely really, really cool. And I mean, these blocks, look awesome green is definitely something i would love to see as far as lighting goes uh wait a minute <laughs> oh no oh oh man that that really that really punches wow he's just staring at me menacingly oh geez <laughs> so let's try this without dying shall we this is the abominable illager a new type of mob that we created specifically for the igloo and as you may have noticed, it's got a couple of different attacks. Oh, so attack number one, as you can see, it attacks like an iron golem and it packs a punch. Attack number two is something that I am personally very proud of. It basically conjures up a massive snowball and it will launch it at you. And it only does this when it's far enough away because as you may have noticed, this is a slower moving mob. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, that packs a punch. Ha <laughs> ha. Only a matter of time now. So let's try this without dying, shall we? My friends, let me introduce you to the Lumen Biome. <laughs> Let's get started. Well, my friends, I say it's time we jump right into the water and get ourselves going. This is the Lumen Biome, a new biome designed entirely from scratch by my team. And as you can see, we are currently in an underwater river canal, which is how you would actually find what you are about to witness. This upcoming is the Lumen Cavern, a new biome dedicated exclusively to the glow squid, now I'm underwater. Okay, there we go, sorry about that. <laughs> Welcome to the Lumen Cavern, cavern, Ca yeah. We can do that via editing, I really don't have to repeat myself. I don't need air, <laughs> I'll be fine, uh, I'll be fine. I need it! <laughs> All right, <laughs> sorry about that. As you can see, most of this biome is well, simply put, glowing plant life and crystals, but we'll get to that here momentarily. We've even got a new mob that we'll take a look at here momentarily, and it's not the glow squid, which I am now hypnotized, but that's okay. This biome is so beautiful, in fact, that I needed to make a background track for it. That's right, I made music for this biome. Let's go ahead and set the tone, shall we? <coughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. Ah, just as the biome was intended to be experienced. As you can see, there are all sorts of amazing things to look at in this biome, and we'll get to all the different blocks here at the end, but one very important key feature to look at is the lumen bud, which as you can see grows on the ceiling. It can also grow essentially on any side of a block, but what it does is actually puts out the particles that you see all around us. And I absolutely love them. I think they are designed very well. They really bring life to this biome and make it feel very luminescent, which is where it gets its name, the Lumen Biome. But I know what you're thinking. 
What about this new mod that you're telling us about? Well, let me get some air first. Oh, goodness. Okay, there, there we go. You know, a little clumsy. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so this new mob is actually known as the Lumen Beetle, and I absolutely love the idea of more bug-type mobs in Minecraft. We have the bee currently, and the bat, which isn't even a bug, and it's really useless. So, definitely more flying creatures would be amazing, but the Lumen Beetle is one of my favorites. And the reason why is they actually glow, as you can see here. They have an emissive texture set, which absolutely looks amazing. But it doesn't end there. They are attracted to light, and they are actually very defensive. If we hit the guy, you can see that we actually get nausea and even slowness. And they even put out particles in the process. Just look at them. Aren't they so magnificent? I actually really love the idea of them having dynamic lighting as well. Meaning, anywhere they go, they actually leave a little bit of a trail of light around them. But unfortunately, in Minecraft, that is something we really don't have. So, it's very likely that we would really never see that. Now, just to kind of get a better glimpse of that hypnosis effect there. I love the idea of nausea when you hit them. It's just their way of being defensive. But there's actually something really cool about the Lumen Beetle, and that is that if you hold a light source, they'll actually be attracted to it. So they are attracted to essentially all light sources, whereas the Warden is attracted to sound. And you could probably see where I'm going with this, but I love the idea that you can't actually tame a Lumen Beetle, but you can have them follow you. So if you manage to find one and bring it all the way to the deep dark, you can actually use it to scare away the Warden, which I know that might sound overpowered, but keep in mind, you have to actually walk with them and have them follow you because you can't tame them. And essentially by having them do so, they would scare off the Warden. This would be a really fun way to actually protect yourself and build up a sense of defense and would give the Lumen Beetle kind of a mechanic that we really don't have otherwise. Plus, I mean, how amazing is it to just have a whole bunch of Lumen Beetles flying around? This is just awesome. I am the Lumen King and this is my army. This is a creature of the lush, and it is my all-time favorite creation. These mobs are a neutral mob, and they spawn exclusively together in packs in the lush cave biome, and using their new spear, they will hunt aggressive mobs. But they do a lot more than just that. And even though they may look adorable, they are far from it. They are very aggressive creatures, and as you can see, their spear, oh gosh, it is extremely frightening. <laughs> Okay, lesson learned. Don't make them mad. Punching them is a bad idea because these guys can either be your worst enemy or your best friend. But to do that, we're going to need a very special item. The lush caves are, well, they are just that. They are incredibly lush and there are plenty of glow berries to eat for the creatures of the lush. But as you can imagine, there comes a point where they get tired of eating the glow berries. And that is why I've added the spore melon as a delicacy for the creatures of the lush. The only problem is, as you can imagine, they can't reach it, but it's okay because, oh, we can. Okay, before we continue, the spore melon slice can be used in all sorts of really cool ways, but we're gonna skip that and put it at the end of the video. For now, this is a golden spore melon, and we can do a lot of really cool stuff with this. Okay, assuming you're like me, oh yeah, by the way, they fish, but a little bit more on that later. Assuming you're not like me and you decide to, you know, not punch them, you can actually give them the golden spore melon to befriend them, which is amazing because it gives you an army of little tiki soldiers with spears, and it is amazing. All right, let's start out with something simple like a zombie. I think that'll do the trick. All right, little guys, remember what we talked about. Defend me at all costs. As you can see, as soon as I'm attacked, hey, not me. They're not the most intelligent creatures, but they do actually start attacking mobs. But sometimes it can backfire because they'll actually start just attacking each other. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a whole thing, but it is amazing. Now these guys aren't incredibly overpowered, but they are still very fun to have around. So that being said, I think you know exactly what I want to try. All right, my friends, remember what I taught you. Nothing. Oh. <laughs> okay, my friends, let's try this again, and this time we will be victorious. Yeah! Woo! We got. 
Now, as you saw earlier, they will randomly decide to start fishing. And my friends, this is by far my favorite feature ever. Now, as you can imagine, they are very tired of glowberries. And of course, they can't reach the spore melons. So they get food and different loot from fishing. We have given underground fishing its very own loot table, which in this case, for demonstration, is why we keep just getting redstone. But you'll also notice that it's not going in their inventory, and that means we could abuse this. Now, I've done a little bit of experimenting, but I'm sure you could come up with a lot better farm designs than I could. But ultimately, this is my very basic fish farm. They will only start fishing if you actually trap them and don't befriend them. So it makes it incredibly difficult to do this. But assuming you do it, it is incredibly overpowered. All right, I think if we continue, we're gonna have to turn them down. That's my voice, by the way. I did all of the sound design and I apologize. It's honestly incredible how much a feature like this could break the game because of how overpowered it is. But nevertheless, I absolutely love it because of the fact that they just randomly start fishing Oh, it's so amazing. And look at all this awesome loot. On October 3rd, 2020, Minecraft was changed forever. Three mobs went face to face in a voting battle where there, the glow squid reigned victorious. And it was on that day that we lost the chance to ever see none other than the Moo Bloom in Minecraft, a mob that I voted for because it was amazing. The Moo Bloom had a lot of potential. I know the Moo Bloom may not have been the most popular vote, but just imagine being able to farm any flower type you want. It's just such an amazing feature for Minecraft, but instead we got a useless glowing squid. I'm sorry, they're making me do this. Wow, look at all of this copper. So much copper, even more copper. You know, there's been several times where I've just had way too much copper in my inventory. And sure, I can make raw copper blocks and have a great time. But when it comes time to smelt, well, it's just a lot to handle. So I thought of a perfect way to fix that problem. But uh, first, I'm going to need a little bit of coal. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Watch this. Watch this. Blast furnace. Okay. Boom. Pow. <laughs> hey, smelting action. Get ready for this. And... But, oh, uh, wait. Uh, okay, let's try that again. Uh, block of raw gold. Look, sometimes things don't go according to plan, but it's okay. In this case, you can see we can basically take the raw form of a block and smelt it into the proper block of that same ore. <sighs> the deep dark biome. Home to the warden and record holder for being the spookiest biome in Minecraft. At least that's what we're hoping for anyways. We haven't actually seen how it will look. Until now. This summer. No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, I got carried away there. Today, I created an early look at the deep dark biome for Minecraft 1.17. So, let me show you how I did it. 76% of the people watching this video are not currently subscribed. That's right, you brought that down from 80%. So thank you very much for doing that. If you enjoy the video, consider subscribing. It would really help my channel out a lot. All right, back to the video. This is the current representation for the deep dark biome that we have. And also the closest to realistic based on the currently existing Minecraft Live deep dark biome show off. But the deep dark biome could definitely use some magic. Oops, sorry, a little close there. It's gotta have blocks. It's gotta have pizzazz. It needs to be an experience. So what do we need? What are we gonna do to recreate this biome? Let's see, we're gonna... <clears throat> we're, uh, we're gonna put a, there's gonna be something here. Uh, okay. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew what I wanted. Nay, I knew what I needed. In order for a biome to be a good biome, it needs to be an experience. Sure, adding a few extra blocks here and there is a good thing, but what about the mobs, man? The warden is great, but if we really want this biome to be the best it can be, we're going to need more. So, with the help of my team, we got to work, and we created our best take on the deep, dark biome. I I'd like to survive this adventure, so for now, we're gonna just kinda explore without the, you know, scary, spooky mobs. But my friends, this is my take on 
the deep dark biome. And I know that right now you probably really can't see anything. I mean, this place is, well, by definition, a dark place, as you would expect. I tried to get as close as I could to the wild generation that we have come to expect from Minecraft 1.17. As you can see, we go from wide to narrow, absolutely tall to very small different areas of generation, and I love how it turned out. We've also got some really interesting uses of some different blocks that we haven't seen yet, but we'll kind of take a moment to look at those here in just a moment. But I actually want to go back to the very beginning and kind of explain exactly how I like to imagine this biome would appear. I mean, this stuff is absolutely spooky. <laughs> this is what I imagine would be a skulk moss cave. And then this would be the actual deep dark biome. These would be two connected biomes that would basically appear together. Some areas would be overgrown with the skulk moss, whereas others would be open and very eerie, I guess would be the right word. These would be the biomes that would essentially be vastly open, where mobs could spawn, but they wouldn't, because this is a very ancient area. I like to imagine that the deep dark biome is somewhere that you go to sort of unlock the mysteries of a previous generation of Minecraft adventurers who lived before you. You could even call it ruins and that's exactly why we've got these pillars. I like to imagine that this was once a coliseum of amazing structures but unfortunately it has just become the deep dark that we now love because let's be honest this place is amazing and as you can see we've even got a really advanced structure here now I'm gonna be honest I didn't do anything I'm talking nothing at all for this structure if you look behind there you're just gonna see a pocket of air why because I'm lazy, lazy. <laughs> The Mimic is designed to keep you on your toes, giving you kind of a unique experience to anything you would really get otherwise in Minecraft. Let's say you find an iron ore that you want to mine. Surprise! It's a Mimic. Let's say that maybe you do like I just did and try and jump up. Surprise! It is also a Mimic. Alright, I'm getting back into a corner. Oh, jeez. Here's a live reenactment of why maybe this would be pretty cool. <gasps> Diamond. Ooh. Oh, I wonder. I, I, I hope it's not a trap. <laughs> oh, oh, my diamond's alive. And if there were any perfect location for a mimic in Minecraft, I think it would be this room, which, as you may know, spawns very frequently in the mineshaft. This is basically a glitch. It shouldn't happen. But I think it could be cool if we gave it a little bit of a purpose. In this case, as you can see, we got really lucky. We found ourselves a diamond block. Oh! It's actually a mimic. Uh, you, yeah, I'm sure you expected that. But as you can see, if you do win the battle, which, I mean, in this case, the reward is a little too great, you get the block in return. I think that's really cool. If it weren't for slime spawning in swamps, I honestly don't think I would ever see a slime. It's incredibly difficult to find a slime chunk without using an external website. Well, it was until I came up with the solution. Pardon me, I'm just trying to walk through. No, no. For the cave update, I think it would be amazing if every now and then you could find a slime chunk that was covered in slime blocks. I mean, how amazing would a biome dedicated to slimes actually be? I mean, as of right now, there is no real indicator that tells us a chunk is a slime chunk. So I think it would be really cool if every now and then a slime chunk was a slime biome, as you can see here. Plus, I mean, not to mention, it's a great opportunity to add a lot of really interesting blocks to the building palette. And of course, not to mention new plants so that you can make potions of slime instead of having to just throw slime balls. And the best part is that slime blocks could add an assortment of all types of new blocks, from overlay blocks where you've got slime drooping down over existing blocks to even new blocks like slime bricks, for example. I mean, how fun would something like this be. Imagine a slime structure. Ooh. Okay, that is a little bit more like it, but we're gonna need just a little bit more light. This is a lantern. <gasps> But it's not just any lantern. Oh no, this is a lantern that can be dyed using any dye in Minecraft. My friends, what if I told you dyeing a lantern wouldn't just change the texture of the lantern, but also the light surrounding said lantern. I mean, how amazing is this? Colored lighting is something people have wanted for a very, very long time. 
I mean, come on. There's no better way to bring atmosphere to the world of Minecraft than providing colorful lighting. I mean, just come on. Look at how amazing the lava looks in this. <laughs> Oh. I mean, it's barely noticeable, but even the purple glow from the amethyst crystals, it's so good! Imagine it, you're exploring the new cave system when suddenly a giant boulder comes hurling at you! This is actually a feature we've secretly been working on on Origin Realms, and honestly, I probably shouldn't be showing you this because it's kind of a secret. But nevertheless, look at how amazing it is. It rolls around and interacts with the world in so many different ways, and if you're not careful, it will deal damage to you. Look at that, I can bounce it off of this crystal! Oh! Oh, it's so cool. I mean, how cool is that? Stay back, creeper. Trust me, you don't want any of this. Oh, you want more, is that so? Oh, <laughs> you can't touch me and my boulders. Okay, like I said, I probably shouldn't be showing you this because it isn't actually even out yet. This and a ton of other awesome features are coming to Origin Realms soon. You can join using the IP on screen now. Let's say that you've gone out in the world of Minecraft and you've collected yourself a precious glow squid. Oh, look at him. He's so adorable. You need water, buddy. What are you doing? Go underwater. Okay, okay. Let's let's grab a fishing rod because this is actually one of the coolest things and ways that the glow squid could actually work. So, whenever there is a glow squid within a 16 block vicinity of a fishing bobber, it actually boosts the effect of lure and luck, which as you guessed it means more fish more treasures in a shorter amount of time. This this is awesome. I love this idea. This is the new and improved bat. I know it doesn't look like much, but not only have we changed its behavior, we've also given it a complete makeover. Be free, my friend. Not only does it look well, I mean, it, it kind okay, it kind of looks the same, but it uh okay, so we kind of messed up. Look, I wanted them to be a little bit easier to hit. It, it, we made them smaller. Uh, but trust me, it they're better, I promise. So I made them a little bit smaller, and maybe they're a little bit harder to hit. But it's okay, because we've actually added even more functionality. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, thank god, it was just a nightmare. So, in an effort to make the bat just a little bit more interesting than it currently is, we have given it a couple of interesting mechanics. If you attack a bat, you will then be swarmed by a bunch of bats, and that actually has a chance to give you blindness, and sometimes even poison. How terrifying. Okay, well, that is one terrifying feature, but they actually have even more interesting mechanics. But in order to showcase those, we're going to need to go get one special item. No, ho, ho! No, ho, ho! No! Even though this video is focused on the bats, we also added a feature to the silverfish. That's right, they drop silverfish. W what a surprise. Who would have thought? And of course, you can also cook that silverfish and eat it. Why have we added a silverfish item? Well, bats love this stuff. Oh, what's this little guy? You want the silverfish? I know you do. Take it. Oh. <laughs> okay, so. Oh. Uh, all right, maybe we just try that again, shall we? Come here! Oh! Okay, so while it's here, as you can see, we can essentially use raw silverfish to activate a sonic effect, which allows us to locate nearby mobs. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, okay! Doing this does require a tamed bat. Now, I've already tamed this bat, so let me show you how to do that. Oh, I'm sorry! What's that? You're hungry? No worries. Let's see. <gasps> so you found a golden apple spawning naturally in a cave near you. Well, it just so happens that the new and improved bat loves golden apple. So if you use that, you will be able to tame a bat, which allows you <gasps> to put him on your shoulder. It's so amazing. I spy with my little eye 
An upgrade for the spyglass, an eyeglass! Oh, how original! And I bet you're wondering how this works. What if I told you that the eyeglass allowed you to find mobs hidden behind walls? I mean, this could be really useful because as you can see, using the eyeglass, we were able to find a spider mob dungeon. Ah, I hate spiders! And the best part is that you can use it to find mobs hidden in the darkness. Hi, Mr. Creeper. Wait a minute. <laughs> and that, my friends, is the eyeglass. This is about to become your favorite block. Well, I don't know about that system, Z. And as you can see, it takes crystals. <gasps> Well, good golly, System Z, what in the world are crystals? On my Minecraft server, we added crystals, our solution to more geodes in Minecraft. Ah, uh, but how do I get to it? It's in the lava, oh no. Hey, who put these magma blocks here? Why did I choose magma blocks? I could have chose any other block. Ah, oh, jeez. As you can see, we can easily take any crystal and break it. And it gives us none other than a red crystal. And they come in all sorts of amazing flavors. And as you can see, they come in all sorts of amazing flavors. We've got green. We've even got blue. We've got every color you could ever imagine. Oh, I gotta calm down. I'm gonna scare them away. And all of these amazing new crystals add even more amazing new blocks. But first, going back to the transit block, the way they work is we have an input and an output. And if you place a block down, you can get its output. And in this case, we have a specific combination of crystals that we need to match. And if you've been paying attention, then you'll notice this block has the other block's combination. You know what that means. We can use it to teleport. I mean, how amazing is that? Oh, I've wanted teleportation in Minecraft for a long time. We can place it anywhere. And as long as we have the code, nothing could stop us. Ow. Oh. <sighs> okay, uh, good, good thing we've got these crystals. I wouldn't remember the code otherwise. <laughs> come on, come on, almost. It's not working, what do we need? <gasps> we need power. It's working! We did it! Ah! And potentially the best part, all of these amazing new building blocks that crystals and more geodes could add to the game. Would you believe that this was done with absolutely no mods? No kidding! You can join for yourself using the IP on screen now. No, 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 no. Oh! Oh, oh I did it! Woo! So with the mo- Why am I Steve? So with a mob that difficult, surely the reward should be something great. There it is. My prize for defeating the warden. A warden horn. I mean, I have always wanted a warden horn. If only we had a brewing stand. <gasps> it's almost like this was placed here. And now, my prize for going through all of the effort and destroying a warden. Something that no Minecraft player as of yet has done because, well, you know, they're not in the game yet. But anyways, my hard work equals three potions of blindness. I mean, I really don't understand what all the hoopla is about and why everybody wants a potion of blindness. Yep. Yep. Th this is it. Oh! Maybe if every mob had glowing in this effect. I mean, hey, I could imagine that because that's pretty cool. Oh, it is a little dangerous though and a little frightening. Uh, hey guys, come on. Take it easy. Oh! Now, I could kind of understand if it was a splash potion, because at least then you could give other mobs blindness. Take this, you fiend. Oh! <laughs> that didn't work how I thought it would. Take this, fiend, again. I, I don't I don't think they really get affected. Yeah, they, they don't really get affected by it. I mean, it's a cool concept, but... But I, I don't I don't know about this one. Let's start with a new item called a copper wrench. Now, I actually showed this off in a recent video all about adding magnets to Minecraft, but I wasn't able to give it a proper spotlight. So let me demonstrate how exactly this would work. As you can see, this allows you to essentially rotate blocks, which as a builder, I could see this as being incredibly handy. I mean, how many times have you accidentally placed something in the wrong direction? If you're watching this video and you are into redstone, then chances are you know exactly why this would come in handy, especially for blocks like the Observer, where you could easily rotate it around. How amazing is this? I could definitely see how this could come in handy. But it's not infinite. If you've noticed, I'm actually using durability as I rotate. Just like flint and steel, as you use it, it will eventually break, meaning you will need copper to replenish your copper wrench. 
I mean, come on, this is amazing, but it doesn't stop there. This block allows us to take the power of lightning and put it into any item or block in the game. But it can't do this alone. We're going to need to use the new lightning rod added in Minecraft 1.17. And now we need a little bit of lightning. If only we could speed this up a little bit. Hey, that'll work. I think it would be best to give you an example of how this works before we get into the beacon. So let's place a glass bottle in this particular conductor. And as you can see, if we hop on top, and let's just throw this diamond down and go ahead and strike the... Oh, well, uh, I missed. <clears throat> let's try that again. <laughs> and strike the diamond. <laughs> and that allows us to get lightning in a bottle. That's right. Lightning in a bottle, and it's just as good as you might think it is. Oh, uh, a little, a little too good, I, I guess you could say. Is, is that my head on the ground? All right, let's try that again. <laughs> ah, that's a little bit better. For our experiment, the conductor block is going to allow us to take the power of lightning and essentially transform various different items and blocks in the game, of course, using the lightning. So as another example, we can take a golden apple, and of course, if we throw away this trash on top and use the trident of power, we can of course create an enchanted golden apple, because why not? Lum, 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 lum. I guess you could say I feel recharged. Okay, hopefully by now you get the point. The conductor allows us to take lightning and essentially gives us recipes to then take items like a bottle and turn it into a lightning in a bottle. Any questions? So the amethyst golem, otherwise known as the geode golem, would spawn all the time, exclusively in every geode that you find. And they are generally known as a neutral mob, meaning you can freely walk around them. And as you could see, they look great. They're friendly. They are absolutely stunning. Their head is a little funny. Look, they can kind of twist. <laughs> Something's not right, but we're just going to ignore that for the for the sake of my sanity. But uh, anyways, so as you could see, they are friendly. Unless, unless you give them a good old punch. And in other words, they're just not that friendly. And that's when they actually launch crystals at you, which... Do really cool stuff, and now I'm dead. <laughs> now, now, Mr. Golem, that wasn't very nice, but after all, I did start it, so yeah. As you can see, the crystals rotate around me and eventually collide in and do damage. This is gonna hurt! Oh no, please! I don't have a shield or any- Okay, this is not a fair fight. That is where a shield would come in. All right, my Golem friend, I have come prepared. Fortunately for me, you're going down. Bring it on, buddy! Oh, jeez! Okay, so now we can use the shield to actually- Well, maybe not. Maybe we can't. Oh, no! This is not gonna be good for me! Nope! Alright, well, okay. Yep. Nope. Oh, darn it. Alright, I know what you're thinking. Couldn't you just not attack him? That way you could just get the amethyst and go? Well, unfortunately not. I wish it were that simple. The way this is actually intended to be added is essentially if you break any of the blocks pertaining to the geode itself, you will upset its guardian, which of course is the geode golem, which packs a punch. I mean, these amethyst crystals do a lot, and they're packed full of magic, as you can see. All right, there, there we, finally. Victory is ours! First and foremost, I definitely think Minecraft needs more handy gadgets, like the Totem of Undying, for example. So this first idea actually comes in the form of a new gadget that you actually have to hold in your offhand or main hand. It basically needs to be held in order to actually be activated. This is an amethyst charm, and let me show you exactly what this does. So let's say that you are in the middle of battle. You found yourself in a cave with, well, not much protection, and there is a very mean skeleton attacking you and, let's face it, dealing a lot of damage. The way the Amethyst Shard actually would work, or the Amethyst Charm rather, is it would actually give you a 25% chance of producing a heart when taking damage. <laughs> and that's a lot of damage. Look at all those arrows. We had an interesting concept that is basically charming tools and armor through enchanted books. So just as an example of how this could work, you could take either an Amethyst Charm, which I showcased earlier in the video, or an amethyst shard and essentially charm the book to then raise the point by one. Now I know this is entirely possible currently by combining two similar books. 
However, this gives some sort of currency to the amethyst, which, as I've said countless times, is a farmable resource. But it could actually be much more valuable than just that. Consider that you have maybe a Fortune 3 book. You could then take the amethyst charm, charm the book only once to create a Fortune 4 going one level beyond the current limit of that particular enchantment. Now, this would obviously have a lot of ramifications for the entire enchantment system. So, maybe that's a video for another day. There are a lot of items that are being added to Minecraft in the Caves and Cliffs update, and there's already a ton of items to be found all throughout the world. Bundles were added for inventory management, so it just makes sense that we can go one step further to actually dye those bundles so that we can color coordinate our inventory. I mean, we can already do this with shulker boxes, and it would be fantastic. I mean, just imagine, you could color code things. Green, you got emeralds. Blue could be, uh... Blue, purple could be enchanting, you get the point. There's a lot of really cool possibilities and the probability of this being added is definitely up there. The only reason I could see maybe this wouldn't work is bundles after all are made with rabbit hide and that's not necessarily a diable resource in Minecraft. So who knows? Let me know though. Do you want to see diable bundles in Minecraft 1.17? So as you can see, we are here in an excavation site. This is a new structure that will spawn in general vanilla worlds, or should I say generate? That would be more sensible. It features something like a tent, uh, maybe even a burner as you can see here, and of course a giant pit. And who doesn't love to jump in a giant pit? In this giant pit, you can see my previous home. No, this is definitely not my home. This is the home of some really long past Minecraft players who left behind treasures that we are meant to uncover using the powers of archaeology, which as you can see here, by right-clicking with the brush, we can actually mine away at the gravel, or sift away, I should say, to reveal treasures inside. I mean, how amazing is this? This is something I've actually... <gasps> is that a diamond? Oh, it is! See, that's what's amazing, is you can get really good treasures. Sometimes you can get really, really awesome things. Other times you can get a ceramic shard, which as you can see, is a little bit more like what we saw during Minecraft Live, but a little bit more on that here in just a moment. And then other times you might not be so lucky, you might get something like, well, here's an example, a flower pot. Now look, I like flower pots as much as the next guy, but that's nothing compared to a diamond. I could honestly do this all day. There is just something so amazing about sifting away at the dirt and gravel. I absolutely love it. I wonder what we're gonna get in this one. Come on, give me something good. Uh, uh-oh. 